All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kel. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back to a very special Sunday site visit, exploring an ancient structure that I have extensively discussed here on the channel. First, way back in episode seven, the symbols of the New Grange curbstone. In episode 23, the function of New Grange and the passage chamber structures of Ireland. In episode 29, the chemicals of the Tuatadonan. In episode 67, UV biohydrometallurgical chemistry at Newgrange, and in episode 76, the Green Lion of Ancient Ireland. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is with the greatest pleasure that I can finally present to you some exclusive Land of Chem footage from one of the most mysterious sites on the planet, featuring footage from inside of the perplexing chemical reaction chambers of Newgrange. If this is a type of content you're interested in regarding the ancient technology of a lost civilization, and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world, this is the channel for you. So please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube, and don't forget to click that little notification bell so that you do not miss the new episodes that premiere twice per week. Please like, comment, and stay tuned. If you want to help support this channel, check out the Land of Chem members-only section. Link in the video description below for exclusive research-related content and unreleased footage that you will not see anywhere else. If you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch, check out thelandofchem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Also, don't forget to check out our two newest channels here on YouTube, Egypt Eats for food reviews and Egyptian Trash Cats for our adventures caring for our Egyptian street cat family. Ladies and gentlemen, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for the support. I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. And for anyone that's interested in coming to Egypt to see the pyramids for yourself, the 2024 Land of Chem Ancient Alchemy and Ascension Tour is on and bookings are now available. For a taste of what you can expect during this life-changing adventure experience, check out the tour promo that just dropped last week. And if you want to join, please send me an email to contact at thelandofchem.com with the subject line 2024 Egypt Tour and I will send you the full tour itinerary and pricing details. Thank you all so much, and I will see you soon here in Egypt. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. And starting way back at the beginning, almost three years ago in episode seven, I began presenting my theory on the function of New Grange by explaining how the mysterious symbols that you can see carved here into the central curbstone represent the chemical reaction sequence that once occurred inside this structure that transformed iron disulfide into ferrous sulfate or green vitriol. And I described how this sequence of glyphs is literally an ancient chemical equation for this reaction sequence. It is an instruction manual describing exactly how this structure operated. And they inscribed these alchemical symbols in stone and placed it right out in front of the chambers so that one day future generations could interpret these glyphs to determine the function of this structure. And it still stands today as an everlasting reminder of the capabilities of this ancient civilization. I have also presented research describing the biohydrometallurgical UV production of ferrous sulfate heptahydrate crystals from pyrite present in coal tailings, in which UV light is utilized for the final transformation of Fe3 plus ions into Fe2 plus ions in the production of high purity ferrous sulfate crystals which provided an explanation for the annual ceremonial rituals that were being performed at this site. During the conclusion of this chemical reaction sequence, as light 
permeated the iron ion rich solution being created inside of these chambers. I have also presented multiple hypotheses for the applications of the ferrous sulfate product, including one that involves the structure operating in conjunction with the forces of nature, where the ferrous sulfate rich solution was introduced into the bogs surrounding the structure and letting nature do the work. To transform the ferrous sulfate into deposits of bog iron. And I explain how this annual ritual would ensure that every subsequent generation would be able to harvest plentiful amounts of this bog iron as the ferrous sulfate was naturally transformed into these large deposits of iron oxide from which metallic iron can be smelted. A process that you are about to see is still occurring to this day in very close proximity to the site itself. This ferrous sulfate solution could have also been collected directly and distilled to render sulfuric acid and iron oxide, or the crystals themselves could have been taken from the chamber and utilized to precipitate gold that had been dissolved into a solution of aqua regia, a process that you can see alchemically symbolized here, where the green lion, otherwise known as green vitriol, or ferrous sulfate is retrieving the gold out of this solution of aqua regia. Even further, I showed that green vitriol is not only useful in these ancient alchemical practices, but also as a dielectric material for the storage of electric fields. With a capacitance of double what we have seen in the limestone of the Egyptian pyramids. And for now, for the first time ever on this channel, you will get a chance to see this bewildering structure up close in person, including some extremely rare footage from inside of the reaction chambers. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I hope you enjoy Sunday site visit from New Grange. And just a quick announcement, new Land of Chem merch is now available. I just dropped the Nano Gold fifth degree logo on a black t-shirt and hoodie and i'm very excited to present the new spectacular white horse logo on a black hoodie and the premium high definition extra large white horse logo on this exceptional quality black t-shirt and once again thank you so much to friend and supporter of the channel adam errington from new zealand for collaborating with me on this new logo design he has done some amazing work in helping me bring my ideas for the Land of Chem logos to life. And if you want to check out more of his work, I'll put a link to his Instagram in the video description below. The Egyptian blue version of the Land of Chem book and the last 30 or so of the signed first edition purple orchid paper print are still available. So if you want to show some love, just check out thelandofchem.com. And thank you all so much for the support. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is day two of our expedition to explore the megalithic sites of ancient Ireland. And I wanted to bring you along on this adventure with us at Lex Levy from Ancient Odysseys with me as always. Good morning. And at this particular site, they've done such an exceptional job with the visitor's center experience that I wanted to share it with you all. And there's a couple of things that we're gonna point out on the walk into the exhibition. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is Newgrange. And to introduce the structure and my proposed theory on the function thereof, I believe that Newgrange is an ancient chemical reactor that was designed to transform iron disulfide into a chemical called ferrous sulfate. And this is a spectacular view of the Boyne River. And over here in the distance is Newgrange at the top of this hill. And a few things I'll point out. The Boyne River and the River Valley 
flowing in very close proximity to the structure itself. The first similarity between these ancient monuments across Ireland and as you've seen in our expedition across England and the construction of the Egyptian pyramids, these structures being built in proximity to the Avon River or the Boyne River here in Ireland and of course the Nile River in Egypt. Second, the marshy area at the bottom of the hill here and within these marshes and bog areas the natural acidic conditions within these bogs and the acidophilic bacteria will naturally digest ferrous sulfate in groundwater and transform it into deposits of iron oxide which are known as bog iron these bog iron deposits have been harvested since the prehistoric times to smelt and render iron metal. So let's propose that you have a chemical reactor at the top of the hill that was producing more ferrous sulfate. That solution then flowed into the acidic bog areas where more of this iron oxide was produced hence more metallic iron that could be harvested on a generational basis, ensuring that all of the subsequent generations of the people that inhabited these areas would have plentiful supply of metallic iron. And as I presented in previous episodes, I discovered a research paper discussing the final conversion of Fe2 plus ions into Fe3 plus ions that is achieved using UV light. And I presented that in a previous episode on the function of Newgrange. So of course, Newgrange being oriented toward the winter solstice, allowing light to permeate the interior chamber and thus the solution contained therein, achieving that final conversion, which produces a very high quality pure product of crystalline ferrous sulfate, a very green crystal. And we just so happened to discover something on our walk through this little corridor yesterday along the entrance to the visitor center. And it is literally evidence of exactly what I just explained right here near the entrance. And this is a, a gorgeous building and I'll show you the building first and then I'll show you what we're gonna look at. So this is the Newgrange Visitor Center. A structure that was built to appear very much in harmony with the surrounding area. It is, it is beautiful over here. So if you ever get a chance, I highly recommend And we're gonna take, take you through the exhibition. And then of course, to explore the monument. And outside of Newgrange, there is a stone known as K1, the curb stone of Newgrange, upon which is inscribed a series of perplexing ancient glyphs, stone carved symbols alchemical symbols that are a rudimentary chemical reaction, literally an instruction manual for how this structure once operated sitting right out in front of the monument. And you will get a chance to see that. I'm very, very excited to finally get video, video footage of that because I have pictures of it, but I've never had a chance to record any of this on camera. So here, You can see a little stream running down here toward the river. And this orange deposit here, that is iron oxide. And these marshes and bogs are filled with these iron oxide deposits. And gradually over time, these iron oxide deposits will accumulate and form lumps of bog iron which I was just describing. So you can literally see this process happening 
here where ferrous sulfate, iron sulfates, and iron containing minerals within the groundwater are being transformed by the acidic conditions here in this little area and acidophilic bacteria that produce these orange deposits of iron oxide. And then of course down here is where the accumulation would occur, gradually forming lumps of iron oxide that can be harvested from the bogs. And this process is well documented in the historic record. The harvesting of bog iron for smelting and retrieving metallic iron. Of course, an incredibly important resource for this ancient civilization and a perfect justification for the construction of such a, an immense monument. And this annual conversion process, I do believe that it was an annual chemical reaction that was completed as the light rays shone down upon and permeated the inner chambers and that solution, converting the iron ions and creating the final product. So of course they had annual rituals to celebrate the completion of this incredibly important ritual, this annual chemical reaction that was occurring inside of these structures. So they have celebrations around the winter solstice to celebrate the successful completion of this incredibly important chemical reaction. Again, the rituals of these ancient Irish mound builders. So we're going to take a walk, explore the visitor center, and then we will get a chance to see Newgrange up close in person, including the absolutely spectacular curbstone that is inscribed with the alchemical symbols and the instructions for exactly how the structure operated. And I'll get a chance to explain that chemical reaction sequence standing right in front of the thing. I'm very, very excited. Yalowina, let's go. All right, since I'm not sure if we will be able to film inside of the structure, I believe this is a recreation of what it's like to enter the passage chamber tomb. So you can hear, see what's known as the roof box which is an air intake passage that allows air to enter the internal system. This area here is most likely filled with water up to this level. Again, this lintel stone indicating the fill line and then the air passage leading into the structure. And a recreation of what is inside. It was really beautiful, very much so beautiful. The chamber Most system. Thing people say is the vault so ceiling to see the light. That allows the circulation of the moist airflow. The people five thousand years ago was And there were granite bowls, red granite. Another similarity to what we see in some inside some of the Egyptian pyramids that would have held your reactant. And, in the dark, and there were three there of these ancillary chambers, one here, one here, and one here, that are symbolically represented by the triple spiral symbol. An indication of that moist airflow circulating inside of the three ancillary reaction chambers. Hopefully I'll get a chance to film inside, but on the 21st of December, I believe at that this point at exactly it is currently prohibited. So we'll see what we can get. The sun Stay tuned. And here's a little area discussing those basins, the carved bowls that are located inside of the ancillary chambers. You can see one of these here, and this part over here. And I'll just read this in case you can't read it on the screen. Basin stones have been found inside the chambers at Noth, Newgrange, and Douth, and in some smaller tombs. Within the Great Mound at Noth, there are three, two in the eastern, one in the western. There are four at Newgrange, one at Noth. Although cremated remains have been found on the stones, they've also been found underneath and around them on the chamber floors. So whatever their purpose, the location of the basin stones at the heart of the passage and the skill that went into crafting them show how important they are. So to me, this is an indication that the placement of those remains inside of these tombs was not original. 
and the intention of these basins was not for housing cremated remains, but rather they are basins that contain the initial reactant that was placed inside of these vaulted reaction chamber systems. And gradually, those reactants contained within the bowls were oxidized by the moist airflow circulating inside of the chamber, transforming that iron disulfide into crystalline ferrous sulfate, which is water soluble that can then be leached out of the chamber, creating a solution containing that dissolved ferrous sulfate. As we previously discussed, that could have easily flown down the hillside into the bog area where it was transformed into deposits of iron oxide, which can then be smelted to render metallic iron. Or there's an alternative to the manufacturing and processing cycle that we'll discuss here in just a moment. And here is a small section discussing the megalithic arc, the symbols that are inscribed on these stones. Saying it is known as Meg megalithic art. There are over 380 stones decorated at Noth. Newgrange has 116, Doth has 38. Stone tools were used to inscribe these symbols. The motifs are generally geometric, including circles, spirals, zigzags, lozenges, snake-like forms, sometimes in combination. They are generally abstract and express the thoughts and ideas of Neolithic people in a code we cannot now decipher. That is because they are looking at this from the perspective of art, instead of interpreting it from the viewpoint of alchemical symbols that contain knowledge about how these structures once operated. And you can see here a description of the New Grange curbstone that contains that triple spiral symbol. And discussing how these stones are often illuminated by the light during the winter solstice, curbstone 67 being illuminated by the midsummer sunrise. And again, in a moment, we'll have a chance to investigate this curbstone up close in person, and I will explain exactly what all of these symbols mean in relation to the operation of the structure. As I said before, it's literally an instruction manual sitting right out in front. This one here is discussing the curbstones at Noth, one of this, which has a very interesting sun splash or sun dial with these rays emanating from a central point. You'll see some footage of that from our expedition to Noth. So again, the archeologists interpret these as being primitive art symbols that have no particular significance basically just decorations of the chambers themselves and I think that they are intended to communicate much more than that the knowledge of this ancient civilization that was intended to be interpreted by future generations to understand the original intention of these structures all right now we just left the visitor center and we're heading up the pathway here toward the bus pickup location as you take a bus from the visitor center to go up to the New Grange Monument. And if you'd like a more thorough explanation and some of the previous research documentation of everything that I've been discussing today, I highly recommend checking out episodes 67 and 76. Episode 67 is bio, UV, bio hydrometallurgical chemistry at New Grange. And I present the research paper that discusses the UV conversion of the iron ions in the solution to achieve the final transformation into a pure ferrous sulfate crystal. I'll also present pictures of the final product and show some diagrams of the structure. Episode 76, the Green Lion of Ancient Ireland, discussing applications for this ferrous sulfate solution. So again, episodes 67 and 76, 
with tons of diagrams and research documenting everything that I've discussed today. Links in the video description below. So we are now crossing the River Boyne. And in those two episodes, I also present some pictures of bog iron showing those orange deposits of iron oxide and some images of what bog iron looks like when it has solidified into a solid deposit. And you can see the marshy bog area here from which these iron oxide deposits could be harvested. So let's consider that these are extremely ancient monuments, conservatively 5,000 years old. So this ancient chemical reaction sequence would have been predicated upon allowing nature to do the work, which is how all of these structures operate. They function in harmony with nature. So by increasing the amount of iron ions going into these bog areas, Again, we can increase the amount of iron oxide that can then be harvested, increasing the amount of metallic iron that could then be rendered, letting nature do the work. The structure working in harmony with the natural environment surrounding it. However, there's an alternative to expedite the production process, increase the purity and product and also increase the diversity of the products. We'll discuss that here in just a moment as we get a little bit closer to the structure itself. And just another beautiful shot. The sun Shining in the distance, the Boyne River flowing past us here, and the marshy bog area at the base of the hill surrounding the monument. And this is the exact same thing that you will see in an upcoming episode where we explore the passage chamber mounds at Karokil. They are constructed on the top of a very tall hill that is surrounded by a bog. And I will say it's an absolutely gorgeous experience out here at the visitor center. All right, everyone, here we go. Exploring New Grange, <laughs> the absolutely immense monument that you can see behind me. And of course, rocking the new six degree Green Lion logo. The Green Lion, of course, representing the ferrous sulfate product that was being produced inside the structure, standing on top of the internal diagram of Newgrange, now available at landacab.com if you wanna help support the channel. So this is a guided tour. And you come up here on a bus and the tour guide takes you through the yada yada. So I'm gonna do my best to record around that. Hopefully we'll have an opportunity to film inside of the chamber, but we'll definitely get some footage of the curb stone, the standing stones surrounding the exterior of the structure. And I'm pretty sure we'll have some time after the tour is complete to walk around the monument and explore a little bit. So ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. I'll do the best I can to film around the group. I am super excited to finally be back here at New Grange. My last expedition here was 2018. 
So it's been five years and a trip that is long overdue. And as we approach the front of the monument, you can see the sanding stones and the quartz crystal embedded with dolerite. Now, this is all reconstruction of how they think that this monument would have appeared in its original condition, but all of this quartz was found on site as well as the dolerite, which are these darker stones that you can see embedded in this quartz crystal wall. Here are some of the standing stones. There's one here, one here, and a few further down where the group is standing. Very similar to what we saw at Avebury. And our first look at the opening of New Grange. And after we finish, I will give a full interpretation of the symbols here on the New Grange curbstone. Stay tuned. all right so they are more restrictive about filming inside of this structure than they are inside of the egyptian pyramids which you would think they would want to share what is contained with inside these monuments to encourage people to come here but clearly they have no interest in advertising this spectacular site so now that we've finished our tour interpretation of the symbols of the new grange curbstone which archaeologists have made no attempt whatsoever to do they describe these as primitive neolithic art with no particular significance and as we've shown this is a triple chamber system and the first step in the process is represented here on the left side of the stone there are three 
diamond shaped inscriptions here, here, and here. These three inscriptions represent the initial reactant that was placed inside of the three basins inside of these chambers. Here at the bottom of the stone, there are undulating lines representing the water filling the lower portion of the passage chamber. And as you can see here, this roof box not only allows airflow into the chambers, which as we were standing inside there, the airflow and circulation inside of the vaulted chamber system is quite significant. And this airflow moving into the chambers is represented by this series of spirals here. And this triple spiral symbol representing the moist airflow circulating inside of the triple chamber system. Three portions of the chamber, three spirals, three basins. Everything on this stone corresponding exactly to the configuration of the internal components. And this symbol intended as an instruction manual to understand how this structure once operated. So your iron disulfide is placed in the basins over here that is gradually oxidized by the moist airflow, the air picking up water, the circulation of this moist airflow, oxidizing the iron disulfide, gradually transforming it into ferrous sulfate. And you will see here that there is another crystal here, leaving the structure, which represents the product being retrieved from the reaction chamber system. And what do we have over here? It's a circular symbol with rays emanating out, representing the sun, illuminating the solution contained inside of the chamber, which as described in episode 67, UV biohydrometallurgical alchemy at Newgrange, the sunlight assists in the final conversion of those iron ions allowing a pure crystalline product to be retrieved so as i previously described you could let nature take its course with the solution flowing downhill into the bogs where the ferrous sulfate and those iron ions are gradually transformed into deposits of iron oxide which can then be harvested smelted to produce iron metal you could also expedite that process by collecting the solution directly and distilling it, which will yield two products, sulfuric acid and iron oxide, both incredibly important, ubiquitously useful chemicals. Of course, iron oxide having applications for rendering metallic iron. Sulfuric acid should be sounding very familiar having all of the applications relevant as we've discussed with the Egyptian pyramids. And the roof box here intended to not only allow airflow to enter the chamber, but also allowing that light to permeate the inner components of the structure. And I think we have maybe 10 minutes left so you get 45 minutes total to explore this absolutely spectacular ancient site. Come all the way halfway across the world and they give you 45 minutes of a guided tour. And here are some of the standing stones outside of the structure. Again, there's one here, 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 and here. Very similar to what we saw at Avebury. And we'll now take a walk around the exterior. So you can see the rest of the monument. So this is a replica of another stone circle. that would have once existed adjacent to the structure. 
you can see here these are all modern pieces but then these ancient stones still in place Another part of the structure here, an additional standing stone. Leading down the hill. Another interesting adjacent structure here, which I've never had an opportunity to document. But we'll see if we can get inside of this bad boy. Ah, oh, fantastic. All right, there she is. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Amazing. Wish we had more time inside of there. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> 45 minutes. At least within the Egyptian pyramids, they don't have, you know, some tour guide barking at you and a time limit on how long you can spend out here. I mean, people fly halfway across the world to come see these things you would think they could give you enough time to fully explore the site and immerse yourself in the spectacular feats that were accomplished by this ancient civilization but clearly that's not their priority they're basically busing people in and out of here as fast as possible it's a business And more of these Greyweck stones. Greyweck, as we discussed, well, depending on what order these episodes are released, Greyweck is a sandstone, high quartz content sandstone. And this rim here is a modern retaining wall, but all of the stones are in their original place. And over here in the distance, you can see Noth, which we visited yesterday. And even right now, I'm trying to hurry so that we can get back to the bus in time. We have a scheduled pickup to take us back to the visitor center. However, on the remainder of the expedition, 
here and so this is a portion of the site that's always had my interest which is a little causeway i could certainly envision a solution running down in this direction being drained oh there's a little look at that a drain flowing down here down the hill into these bogs or to be collected directly as we just discussed and I will say this is an absolutely spectacular sight Just the, the tourism protocol that they have here is unfortunate. However, the remainder of the stops that we will be taking here in Ireland are unescorted. You just basically park your car and walk up the side of the hill so we'll have much more time to explore and a lot more exclusive footage coming up here on the land of Kem. Live from Newgrange. This has been an awesome adventure so far and I'm incredibly grateful to be able to share the experience with you guys. Hope you're enjoying it. Lots more research-based episodes coming up explaining the function of these sites and a whole lot more coming up soon. Stay tuned. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was Sunday Site Visit 40 from Newgrange. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And in the next episode in the series, we will return to investigate the Osiris Shaft. This is an episode you do not want to miss. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification bell, like, comment, and stay tuned. If you want to help support the channel, check out the Land of Chem members only section and thelandofchem.com if you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at the Land of Chem. Also, don't forget to check out our two new channels here on YouTube, Egypt Eats and Egyptian Trash Cats. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for your support. I think that is it for today's episode, so I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now.